Son joy the one that never ends because he lives. I was dead in the grave. I was covered. My name is John Tyler, and I have the privilege of directing the West Coast. Settle in and get ready for this morning's service. 
A reminder, if you have a cell phone, if you could turn it off or put it on silent so it doesn't disturb today's message. And if we could bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you once again that we can gather together, Lord, in the building you provided for us. In peace and safety, Lord, still able to enjoy the freedom that we have, Lord, in this country to gather publicly and worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. We thank you for sending your son, Lord, to die on the cross so that we could have a healed relationship and a home in heaven through faith in him, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, Lord. We thank you for preserving your word so we could have in our own language, Lord, your word so we can understand your plan, Father, and what you have for us on this earth. Pray, Father, you just prepare our hearts for the message this morning. Pray for Pastor John as he brings it forth. And we lift up those that are going through different adversities, Lord. We lift up our sister Lori to you, Father, for health. And all those that are going through different adversities, Father, whether it's spiritual or physical, you know them by name, Father, and we just lift them up before you, Father. You would just comfort them and strengthen their faith, Father. We lift up our brother Joe to you, Lord, for as he expects to wait for this new living situation, Father, we pray you just bless him with that, Father, and we'll put that in your hands, Lord. Pray, pray, Father, all that we do will bring glory and honor to your son Jesus this morning, Lord, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read a portion of scripture if you'd like to follow along in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 23 through 29. Sing unto the Lord, all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. If we could stand and worship the Lord. Love to sing your praises.
Let's do that. Let's lift up this one. Lord, I lift I to sing your praise. I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. So glad you're in my life.
Amen. You may be seated. Today's service, Sunday, March 17th, 2019. Today's topic, handling the test of being alone. Subtopic, loneliness is a pathway to God. Today's announcements. Men's ministry will be meeting at 7 p.m. on Friday, March 22nd in the fellowship hall. All men are welcome to attend. Women's ministry will be meeting at 6.30 p.m. this Tuesday, March 19th. All ladies are welcome to attend. Pastors' prayer and worship will be meeting at 7 p.m. on this Thursday, March 21st. The youth ministry will be meeting at 5 p.m. on Saturday, March 30th. All youth ages 9 to 16 are welcome to attend. Also, Friday night Bible study will be meeting March 29th at 7 p.m. And lastly, after service, there is a coffee and if you'd like to stay after, have a, um, some time of fellowship and some pastries, feel free. With that said, the children and teachers could be dismissed to class. Now it's my honor and privilege this morning to introduce our pastor, Pastor John Ritchie. Praise God. It's good to be here. Wow. No better place to be on Sunday morning, worshiping God with God's people. It's a great time of encouragement and blessing to me. It always is. No matter how I come in, I always go out better. I hope it's the same for you. Uh, please turn to Psalm 25. And before we uh, begin our message this morning, do we have any first-time visitors? And any, any first-time visitors? How about anybody that it's your first time in this building? You might have visited us in the past. Here we go. We got one right here. Give that young lady a copy of the book. This is our gift to you, Heather. 199 promises of God for your every need. We pray that it'll be a blessing to you, and it's our way of saying welcome, and we're so glad to have you this morning. Let's give her a hand clap. Okay. Is there anything I got to announce? I don't know. Why am I asking you? Right? you, you right? No, I don't think so. Okay, if we could, yeah, let's get our, our minds and our hearts focused. We're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to be looking at handling the test of being alone. Loneliness is a pathway to God. I begin in a new subject that God has laid on my heart to begin. So let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this morning we are so grateful and so thankful to have this time and this opportunity to gather together with your people around the word of God and to the name of our risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this morning, Father, that you would indeed challenge our hearts through the things that we're about to note and study, that we may learn how to walk with you and how to take advantage of all the wonderful privileges and provisions that you have made for us through the indwelling spirit, your word, the prepared pastor, the local church, your perfect plan for our lives. And I pray, Lord, that we would be encouraged and strengthened through the study, Lord, that will take several classes, several Sundays, Lord, to be able to face and handle the test of being alone. And Lord, I pray this morning that I could speak with wisdom, with grace, with conviction, with passion, with the authority your word deserves, and to take the knowledge that you have given me on this important subject, make it clear, make it accurate, make it understandable, that your people may hear and be blessed and be equipped to live for you and fulfill your plan. And I do pray this morning, if there be anyone that is within the sound of my voice, face to face or on the live stream or in the future that hears this message, that is unsaved. My prayer is that you would convict them of their sin and of their need of Jesus Christ, that they might believe upon him and receive the forgiveness of sins 
and eternal life through faith in his name. And I ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, we're going to turn to Psalm, if you will, 25. We're going to begin our study there this morning. And as I said, I want to talk about handling the test of being alone. And the only way you can handle the test of being alone is to be occupied with Jesus Christ and to build a soul structure so that you will have a rich fellowship and social life with God that will satisfy your soul. Many believers fail in the spiritual life because they do not know how to handle being alone. There will be a time in every one of us lives if we are growing in the Lord where we will be in a place where we will feel alone where we will be alone, where God will put us in a place alone. If you look here at Psalm 25, look at verse 16, we hear the plea of the writer of this psalm, David. And David knew what it was to be alone. He knew what it was to be persecuted and alone, afflicted and alone. He knew what it was to be hated and be a fugitive and be alone. And look what he wrote in verse number 16. Turn thee unto me. It's his plea to God. And have mercy upon me, for I am desolate. And to be desolate means to be alone. To be desolate means to be alone and without any human accompaniment or human provision, human help, or human resource. And afflicted. And he was not just alone. He was alone, desolate, and afflicted. And he was under attack from Saul. And his life was hanging in the balance every day as Saul sought to kill him and sent his armies after him. Most of us will never be in the place where David was. We will be in places where we will be alone, but we will, most of us, never be in a place where our life is hanging in the balance moment by moment. But David was able to handle the place of being alone, and he was able to handle the place of loneliness and he was able to handle the affliction that went with his circumstance and the, and, the, and the feeling of loneliness because of his rich fellowship with God. He had his moments where he struggled, but he didn't wallow in a pity party, sulking about how difficult it was to be alone. He was able to recall to mind the things of God, and we'll look more at David perhaps next week, but I have to begin with this study, and it's a, such an important study, brothers and sisters. Um, there are a lot of reasons that we can find ourselves alone in this world. Uh, you could be single, an unmarried person. Uh, you've never been married. You're just single. You may be younger, you may be older. And uh, you're waiting on God to bring that right one along. How do you handle being single? I'll guarantee you this, that if you're single, it's not by accident. It's God's will, and God has made you alone to prepare you for whatever he has for you. It could be bringing the right man, the right woman into your life. It could be area of service and ministry. It could be many things. But if you are single and you've never been married, God is preparing you and equipping you for something good in the future. You may be a divorced person, or you may be going through a divorce, and it's painful, and there's a painful separation, and you feel alone. But God has allowed it in his sovereign plan for your life, and God wants to use this time of being alone to work in you, to equip you and prepare you because God's not done with you. There may have been a, a pain and a loss and hurt and failure, but you know what? The bird with the broken wing can be healed and what? Fly higher. God's not done with you. There's a future and there's a hope. And this time of being alone is part of God's preparation to equip you for the future. Vic, just do me a favor. It's warm enough now. Just close that because I'm hearing foot people walking back and forth and it's distracting me. Oh, not Vic. Vic, the guys can get it. The guys can get it. Just pull that down. Pull it down, please. It's warm enough now. We'll be okay. Okay, so you understand. Focus up here, folks. Don't look at them. This is a test of your concentration right now. 
Focus up here. Look at me. Okay? Not because I'm so pretty, but because I'm talking about the Word of God. Okay? Let's not get distracted. The, you may be going through a divorce, but that's not the end. That loneliness of divorce can be a pathway to a great and fantastic future. You may be widowed. You may have lost your husband. You may have lost your wife. You're alone. I guarantee you, you can handle it if you utilize God's solution, not the world's, and it can lead to fantastic blessing. As long as you're alive, as long as you have breath in your lungs, God has a purpose for you. Your circumstance, you may have, you may not feel alone in the sense of you don't have a partner, you may be married. You may have a husband, you may have a wife, you may have a boyfriend, you may have a girlfriend. You may have people around you, good friends. And yet you're facing something in your life where only you and God can understand it. And you feel alone. You're not alone, alone physically, but you are alone in your spirit and in your soul. That's another reason for being alone. You can have a wonderful husband, a wonderful wife, good family, friends, and yet there's something that you're facing in your life that people outside of you cannot understand. Only God knows. And you feel a sense of being alone. How are you going to handle it? That's the key. You hear me today? How are you going to handle being single, waiting for God to bring the right one? How are you going to be handling being divorced and being healed and perhaps maybe having an opportunity for a godly remarriage in the future or whatever blessing or ministry or blessing that God has for you. How are you going to handle the being alone now? Because what you do now, being alone, is going to determine your future. How you utilize your time and how you approach being alone is going to determine your future blessing. Maybe you're widowed and you've lost someone. You're still here. God has a purpose for you. How are you going to handle being alone? Maybe you have people all around you, but it's a difficult circumstance where you feel alone. How are you going to handle it? Because it's going to determine your future. Now, I want to look at these things this morning. How we handle the test of being alone is going to make or break our spiritual lives. I want to repeat that. How we as believers handle being alone is going to make or break our spiritual lives. Many believers, unfortunately, many believers will never enter in to God's highest and best for their life. Exceedingly abundantly, above all you could ask or think. You may be in a tough place today, but let me tell you something. If you execute God's plan, God's got something real good for you. And, and you probably couldn't even think about it right now, that it would be that good. But I'm going to tell you, it's that good. But it depends on you growing and gaining capacity, growing deeper in your relationship with him, maturing, and being equipped and prepared for that blessing. And you must utilize the time you have alone to become in that person that can be blessed, to gain the capacity for whatever God has prepared for you. Or you can resist your place of loneliness, you can resist being alone. You can become frustrated and bitter and angry and complain and gripe and run off to the world for a solution and falter and flounder and wander in a spiritual wilderness and miss out because you never realized that being alone was part of God's plan to prepare and equip you for something greater. Think about it. You hear me this morning? You wallowed. You got frustrated instead of realize this is an opportunity to grow. It is a stepping stone into something greater. And I want to tell you something. You can handle it. Many believers will fail because and there's probably people right here today. You feel alone. And maybe you're frustrated. And you need an attitude change. And you need to repent of your frustration and your unbelief. And you need to Readjust your focus and your motivation to God's plan and realize that your loneliness 
is an opportunity for growth that will be a stepping stone to something fantastic. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Everyone in the Bible that we see gets blessed fantastically always has a time of what? Isolation and loneliness and being alone. John the Baptist goes into the Jordan, beyond the Jordan, the wilderness beyond the Jordan. Paul is three years in Arabia. David is in the sheepfold, taking care of the sheep by himself. Nobody notices. Moses is on the backside of the desert. Joseph ends up through a string of what? Troubles in prison for many years of his life. Even the Lord Jesus, before he begins his public ministry, has 40 days, 40 nights of temptation in the wilderness, alone against Satan. Are you hearing me this morning? It's very important, folks. It's very important. And many believers will falter and stumble when they get to that place of feeling alone because they will allow their emotions to take over. They will become bitter, frustrated, complaining, and they'll run off to the world for solutions. And they will wallow and they will sulk in self-pity. Woe is me. I'm alone. Oh, nobody cares. Listen, you could not be alone unless God in his sovereignty, what? Allowed it. So if you are there, you have to stand up. Everybody can have their moment. Listen, we're going to look at Jeremiah next week and David in the weeks ahead. They had their moments of, woe is me. But they did not stay there. They did not wallow there. And God told them, and even Elijah, what are you doing? Get up. Get back in the plan. God told Jeremiah, return to me. Repent from your self-pity and your moaning and your groaning and your sulking. And get back in the plan and I'll use you because I got something for you. See, God will give us our moment because he knows we're what? Human. But it is wrong of us to moan and groan and grieve beyond what is necessary in God's eyes. You see? And I hope in this study you will focus because there comes a time where God says, okay, enough being upset with me that you're alone. Let's stand up now and let's grow through this. And I have made provision for you to handle this. You can handle this because the scripture says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that means facing anything in life. It's not just for football players who score a touchdown who misquote it out of context. <laughs> it's about handling life's obstacles, challenge, troubles, trials, tests, and heartaches. He will strengthen you. Okay. So let me give you another verse, if you will. Turn me to Isaiah chapter 41. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 41. Handling the test of being alone. And I'm going to tell you, there are Christians probably right this minute who are alone and who are upset and frustrated. And rather than focusing on God's solution and God's plan and trusting him and embracing... See, I'm hoping that after I'm done with these studies, might be two or three of them at least, I'm hoping that what you will do is embrace your loneliness because you see it as part of God's plan to prepare you for something greater. And I hope it will, it will make you realize that you have been provided by God the things you need to handle that place of being alone and that you can persevere through it and come out the other end of it better and equipped for God's purposes. Or you can let this go in one ear and out the other and fail to accept it and apply it and just remain frustrated in your what? Loneliness, being alone, and you will miss out on God's highest and best. And you will wallow like Israel in the wilderness and wander until your life on earth and sojourn here is done and you'll land in the kingdom. But you will have lost so much. 
saved, but as by fire. Okay, Isaiah 41. No believer ever needs, no believer ever needs to be overwhelmed with loneliness. Do you hear me? No believer in Jesus Christ ever needs to be overwhelmed with loneliness. And we'll see why. Look at what God promises. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Here God promises his people, don't be afraid and do not be dismayed. Don't be frustrated and discouraged and upset with your circumstances because I am your God. I am in control and I am going to help you and strengthen you and uphold you so that you can stand and make it through this and come to the place of blessing that I have for you. God promises this. God promises this. Do you believe it this morning? Because if you believe it, you won't wallow and sulk about your circumstances. You won't have a pity party. You won't give in to the devil's lies and the, and the people he uses to put the wrong thoughts in your head about your circumstance of being alone. Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You don't have to turn there. Romans 8, 28, he causes all things to work together for good for them that what? Love him. Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all my needs according to his what? Riches and glory. Whatever you need to handle the place of being alone, I will guarantee you that God has provided. The question is, will you accept the provision and utilize it even if you don't like what the provision is. Your provision may be, he's got me working a dead-end job, living in a basement apartment with no money in my pocket, just enough to cover the bills. No spouse, no girlfriend, no boyfriend. No social life or activities. But he gave me a Bible and a church and a tape player. I said tape because I'm talking about me. We didn't have CDs back then when I was going through this. And doctrine and the indwelling Holy Spirit and his personal promise that he would never leave me nor forsake me. I can remember time going through a terrible divorce and feeling so broken and so alone, working in Aranzio Pizza, delivering pizzas at 3 o'clock in the morning to drunk college students. To make enough money just to get by, living in a basement apartment in my parents home but you know what I had a shelter over my head I had food on the table I was able to pay the bills and much, not much left over and God gave me years like that alone but I knew God had called me to something and I believed this promise that he will wait, therefore will the Lord wait, that he might be gracious unto you. I believe that he was with me, and I believe he had a plan for my life. I believe that in his grace, I could recover from this terrible circumstance and go forward in God's plan and be blessed. And oh, I had my moments, but I realized that God was giving me this time and this provision, which I may have wanted my car was an old Toyota Corolla, thank God. They get like 250, 260,000 miles on them. Kept running, thank God. <laughs> I didn't have any money to get anything better. Right? I remember one time it broke down and needed a quick fix. And my father, he was doing well at the time. He had a Cadillac. You know, he was a businessman, you know. And he always, I didn't want to lean on him 
you know, it was enough that, you know, my mom cooked meals and I was able to live in the basement, okay? But I had to borrow his car to go to work. And here I am driving up to Bryant College with a stack of pizzas to a bunch of drunken college kids on a Friday night, and I'm dr driving a brand new Cadillac, and they're like, wow, the pizza business must be good. <laughs> I just shut up and gave them their pizza and said, pay me. I was, always a little t I was always a little rough when I went there. You wouldn't like me as a pizza delivery man. Because I knew these kids were drunk and high and I didn't want to deal with it. Just, you owe me $52 for them six pizzas. Let's go. That was it, you know. I don't want to deal with it. But anyway. God's, God, I, I've become sweeter since then. A little bit anyway. But what's the point I'm trying to make to you? And I'm not preaching this message as someone who is telling you what to do and has no idea what he's talking about. I've been there, folks. I've been through the brokenness, the hurt, the pain, the loss, and in that place where I felt so alone, so alone. But I also realized that God had me there to equip me for what I'm doing today. Do you understand that? And I've got frustrated at times, but after a while, I learned enough doctrine and built enough soul structure because I had some good teachers and preachers. And I'm very grateful to a man named Robert Thiem who taught me many things about the Christian life. And I learned it, and I believed it, and I applied it. And there came a point where I embraced, I embraced being alone because I understood that nothing happens by accident and that God always wants to bless us, but he has a principle. He can only bless capacity. If you're in a place where you're being alone, let me tell you something, God is preparing you, but there's still something missing in your life. And what's missing is capacity and God's timing. And as you gain the capacity, then it's just a matter of waiting his what? Timing. But will you utilize being alone and whatever, all that represents to grow deeper in the Lord, closer to him, execute his plan, not get angry with God or with his provision. I could have said, God, why do I have to live in a basement apartment and drive a beat-up Toyota and work at a Ronzio Pizza? Why can't I have something better? But I didn't do that. I'm not patting myself on the back. I was thankful that I had my needs met. And it gave me an opportunity. All that time alone, all that time alone, was time to study and seek the Lord and get to know him and to learn how to handle the problem of being alone so that God could one day promote me because he had already prepared me. He will do the same for you. He will do the same for you. Whatever place of loneliness you're in. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. The test is being alone. The promise is I will never leave you. Do you hear me? The test is being alone. The promise is I won't forsake you. The provision is I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will empower you. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Lord, how am I going to handle this place of being alone? How am I going to handle this isolation? How am I going to handle the loneliness? How am I going to handle the obscurity? How am I going to handle the frustration that the devil's trying to bring? How am I going to handle the affliction that comes with it? You're going to handle it by occupation with Jesus Christ through his word. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And see, in that all, there's a big enough umbrella under that all to include your situation and to include your loneliness and to include your circumstance of being alone. Do you hear me this morning? God has told you in his word, you may be alone, but I will provide and strengthen you and give you 
everything you need to handle it. You know, there's a lot of single Christians. They spend all their time running around looking for a mate. And they always end up with the what? Wrong one. Or oh, they think it's great. They think it's wonderful. Then the wedding day comes and it's all fantastic. And then after time, the reality of marriage and life and living together with another human being sets in and maybe children come along and all of a sudden bills and problems and they realize, you know what, who the heck is this person that I'm sleeping next to? They get very, very frustrated because they did not use their singleness to grow and become the right person. They could not wait to be married. They just needed a man. They just needed a woman, and it didn't matter who it was. It didn't matter if they were Christian and godly and were walking down the same path as them. They just needed it, and they did it. And there was a time where it was great, honeymoon season. And then all of a sudden, the reality of life sets in. You realize, I don't know if this person has the same perspective, direction, viewpoint, values that I have. I don't know if they want what I want out of life. And why did that happen? Because they did not understand that being alone was not a time to try to find a mate. Being alone was a time to become the right person by drawing closer to Jesus Christ and being occupied with him so that he could equip you to be the right person so that at his time he could be, bring the right person for you to you. People have taken jobs, they've taken responsibilities, they've taken on burdens because they didn't want to be alone. They didn't want to be alone. They didn't want to wait on God. Now listen to me this morning. God's provision to handle being alone is a lot different than the world's. I'm going to upset some people. Because, you know, the world, you can go to the counselor or the psychiatrist, you know, or the priest, or even the pastor nowadays, because there's a lot of pastors, that they're not, they're spiritual quacks. They don't study the word. And they'll give you all kinds of advices what you should do to handle your loneliness. The world has all kinds of solutions for the problem of loneliness. They've got self-help programs. They've got clubs you can join. They've got motivational speakers and seminars and psychiatrists and medications and support groups. And listen, if you're on a medication because you have some issues, stay on it. I'm not saying that don't. But I'm trying to tell you that even that is not going to be the perfect solution. That's only a what? A temporary band-aid to help you get to the real solution. But all these solutions that the world would give you, you, hit, you tell a friend of yours that's not a spiritually mature, you're like, don't come and tell me that you, you, you feel alone because I'll, I'm going to give you what the Bible says. Well, God has you there for a purpose. Now you need to know how to handle it. Here's these tapes. You go listen to them or these CDs. Go listen to them or go online and learn what you need to do. And I'll be praying for you. Don't expect me to teach 10 hours of study on what you should already know. You put the work in. Okay? Now, but what I want you to understand, you'll hear some friend say, well, you know, I know a girl. Oh, I got this friend of mine. He's cute. Oh, you know what? There's this, there's this club we go, and the, the band is great, and we get together, and we have a great time. You'll you meet a lot of friends there. Yeah, they'll, they'll give you every kind of what? Solution for you to be around people so you won't feel so alone. But nobody will tell you what I'll tell you and what God will tell you. Stop complaining about being alone and realize you could not be alone unless God had made it that way. And you're in the place you're at today because that's where God wants you. Okay? And... The solution is not running off to one of these worldly, fleshly programs because they all fall short of the real solution. All these worldly ideas and all this worldly advice and all this worldly opinions fall short of the real solution. And don't go to mom and dad unless they're really mature Christians 
and very honest because mom and dad love you so much they'll tell you something silly sometimes too because they don't want to see little Joey or little Sally be sad but I've learned something and this is hard as a parent there are times where God says keep your hands off the children they need to go through this if they're going to become what I want them to be don't try to make it easy and soothe it for them they've got to walk through it themselves just like you had to and they're going to learn to trust me. But all these solutions and approaches, they fall short of a real lasting solution to the problem of loneliness. Why, Pastor? Why doesn't it work? Because all these worldly solutions do nothing to address the real fundamental problem of loneliness. And now I'm going to make some people mad. But that's okay. Be a big boy, be a big girl, be objective now. Don't get subjective and emotional and get mad at me. Be objective. If it hits and it hurts, so be it. That means you've got to do something about it. Don't try to kill the messenger because you don't like the message. I am not your enemy. I am your friend. Paul said, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm telling you this because it's the truth. And if it's true of you, then you need to do something about it. You need to make some changes. Here's the problem. All these approaches and all these solutions do not address the real fundamental problem of loneliness. You say, well, what is the real fundamental problem of loneliness? The emptiness of your soul. You have an empty soul. Whoa. Whoa. Them's fighting words. You want me to lie to you? When you cannot be alone with just your thoughts, where's your soul reside? Well, I don't know. Well, there you go. There's one of the problems. You should know from the Bible. If you've been here any length of time, this is not to insult you. This is to help you. I'm trying to encourage you to do something. This is exhortation. The teaching will follow. I'm in my introduction, but where's your soul reside? Right here. This is where the soul resides. This is the seat of the soul, right here in your mind. And this is where your intellect and your emotions and your feelings and your will reside. Right what? Here. In your conscience. And you're either going to, f and, and that's where thought takes place, in the soul. We meditate in our soul. We, thought takes place in the soul. So now, when you are alone and you don't like it and you're frustrated and you're upset, you know why? Because the content of the thoughts of your soul is not established upon reality and truth. And the reality and the truth is Jesus Christ and his word. Everything else out there is, a, is, is part of Satan's world system and is a deception and a lie. If you cannot be alone with just you and God and be happy, you have an empty soul. David handled, David handled his loneliness. He had his moment, and I'm not saying your soul is empty if you have a moment of frustration. We all have those moments, but you recover from them. And you realize, no, God has provided and promised something far better than this. Now, some people will be upset with me for saying this, and they will fail to hear everything else that I've got to say in the next few weeks. Right now, some people are upset. He just insulted me and said, I have an empty soul because I have a hard time being lonely. I have a hard time handling being alone. See, because there's the problem. Emotion has controlled their soul. Not godly doctrinal thinking from the mind of Christ with a renewed mind that the Bible commands us from his word, but emotion. They hear sermons, but they kind of just go in and then out. They don't absorb it, store it here, and then stand on it and believe it and apply it. So right now people are upset and frustrated. He said, I have an empty soul because I'm upset about being alone, and I've been upset for so long. 
But I pray that you take that as Pasta is trying to help me. He's trying to tell me that I'm living in a way, in a place that is not according to God's will and God's plan. And that God's got something better. So I need to shift from doing it the way I've been doing it to doing it God's way. And then I'll be able to have a soul that's full. And when I'm alone with just God in my thoughts, I'll still be happy. I'll still have peace. I'll still have meaning. I'll still have purpose. I'll still have confidence because I have rich fellowship with Jesus Christ and my thoughts are occupied with Him right here in my soul. When you are alone, it is an indicator of where you are at spiritually, folks. It's another one of those thermometers. You know, how you handle people that hurt you, if you can forgive them, that's an indicator. How you handle problems, can you trust God? How you handle being alone is a thermometer of where you are at, a barometer, a thermometer, whatever you want to call it. It's an indicator of what your true spiritual condition is. Do your thoughts turn to Jesus Christ? Or are you just trying to find a way to sublimate the fact that you feel lonely? Are you on the, the chase for a man or the chase for a woman? Are you on the chase for some type of entertainment and sublimation to satisfy the emptiness of your soul. Are you one of these people that you just can't stand being alone? You have to have something planned for every night? Oh, I go to work during the day. That keeps me busy. You know, and I come home and I shower and I cook dinner and I walk the dog, but I just can't stand being alone at night. And I need to go here, there, everywhere. What about learning some doctrine, building a soul structure? and growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ? What about utilizing that time wisely? Well, I have a hard time reading the Bible. You don't have to read it. I wish you would. But you know what? Go online, turn Richie on. Pick a subject, turn Richie on. Start with the basics. Start studying. Open up your Bible, get a notebook, and start studying. Let me tell you something. Oh, but that's not exciting and fun and titillating. It doesn't tickle my fancy, no, but that's what's going to strengthen you spiritually. And listen, nobody who ever achieved anything great in life ever did it by neglecting discipline. Anybody who's ever achieved anything great will tell you, yeah, you're looking at me now. You look at some, some great athlete, and you see, you know, they got a beautiful home, and they got the wife, and they got the car, and everybody cheering for them. But you don't see the years and years where they were alone. Maybe they grew up in a ghetto, barely had enough food on the table. You don't see the hours of training in the gym, lifting weights and running. You don't see the hours and hours of practice and film watching and preparing themselves for their crafts. And while they were doing that, their friends were out doing, having a social life, drinking and partying, and they had to sleep 10 hours because they had to get up at 6 in the morning in their college years and go train with weights, go to class, and then go to practice, then study, and then do it all over again the next day. And they had to give up social life for a certain season. And there are seasons where God puts us alone and he says, discipline yourself. Because this is a time of growth. You can resist it or you can embrace it. If you resist it, you will flounder and wander and keep making bad decisions and you will be frustrated eventually. And if it continues without repentance and correction, you will waste your Christian life and miss out on the highest and best God has. And don't get mad at me because I tell you that. That's love talking to you today. That's someone who cares enough about you to tell you where it's at and what the real deal is. Do you understand? Do you understand this this morning? You're going to have to make sacrifices if you want what God has for you. Now, if you don't want it, go do your thing. Go do your thing. God loves you. He's forgiven you if you've trusted Christ. Play church. Pop in every once in a while. 
Listen to his sermon here and there. Throw a few bucks in the basket. Pray when you can. But go do your thing. Go chase something to take away the problem and the pain of being alone. But I'll guarantee you, it won't fix it. You hear me? It won't fix it. Occupation with Jesus Christ through his word. Building a soul structure that leads to a rich knowledge and fellowship and relationship with God is what handles the problem of being alone. Do you hear me this morning? So here's the problem. Let's, and I'm not going to rush through this. I got about 10, 15 minutes here. It's going to take me at least three classes, maybe more, I don't know. But this is such a serious subject. Then we'll get back to the misapplied passage. There's so many of them. The problem with the world's solutions is, as I said, and I'm going to repeat it, those solutions do not address the fundamental problem of loneliness and being alone, and that's the emptiness of a person's soul. People can't be alone with just their thoughts. Why? Because they lack a soul structure. They lack the contentment and the peace that comes when the soul's thoughts are full of God's truth. The soul is going to concentrate on something. It's either going to be God's truth or something else the devil puts there. A person, entertainment, things, etc. And when you're alone with your thoughts and you lack contentment and peace that comes from your thoughts being focused on God's word and being full of his truth, you can't handle being alone because your soul is empty. The lack of the soul structure. What's a soul structure? It's building into your soul right here, your thinking, the knowledge of God's word. Doctrine upon doctrine upon principle upon principle upon promise upon promise. Layering it right in here. The lack of the soul structure leaves the soul at the mercy of the carnal, fleshly emotions and fleshly wisdom. And it always leads, it always leads to self-pity, bitterness about your circumstances, insecurity, frustration, depression, sinking into negative carnal thoughts. Listen, if that's happening to you, and if that's where you're at, if you're bitter about your circumstances, if you're wallowing and sulking in self-pity, if you're insecure, if you're frustrated and depressed and you feel yourself sinking, what's the reason? The world will give you a hundred explanations. The Bible gives you one. The strongholds have not been pulled down by the weapons of what? God's warfare, the word of God and faith in that word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Only God's plan has a solution for loneliness. Only God's plan has a solution for the emptiness of the soul. And the solution is occupation with Jesus Christ through faith in his word. It is coming to the place to coin a term that Pastor Theme used, which helped me so much when I was in this circumstance. And it's this, building a social life with God. You start to get excited about Jesus Christ. You can't wait to hear his word daily. You want to be with God's people. You want to hear the word. You want to study the word. You want to take it in. You have a thirst for it and a hunger and a desire for it. And you're earnestly and diligently seeking it. And you're making decisions in your life to let people and things go that are just hindrances to what? Growing in your knowledge of the Lord through His Word and building your spiritual life and building that soul structure. Things that are distractions and hindrances have to go. Shut the TV. Tell those friends you don't need to go out with them tonight. Whatever it is that's hindering you, build a social life with God. 
The soul needs to be filled with true thoughts about God so that your faith can be focused on God's promises, God's plan, God's purpose. God has one plan. He says he will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is stayed or focused on him. How do I keep my mind focused on Jesus? By learning his word, believing it, storing it here, and having it what? Circulating in my thoughts. God has one plan, one solution for all our troubles. And the trouble of what? Being alone. Believe and obey his word and experience the power of the indwelling spirit. John 8, 31 and 32. Look what Jesus said. Look what Jesus said. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if, maybe you will, maybe you won't, ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So Jesus lays this out. He said, if. Now to be saved, you simply believe. What do I need to do to land in the kingdom? To have my sins forgiven and to be saved? Believe. How much faith? A little more than no faith at all. Faith of a mustard seed. It's not how much faith you have, it's who you put your faith in that saves. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Salvation is by grace, it's easy. Spiritual growth takes effort. Take up your cross, follow me daily. Learn my word. Continue. Now, if you will continue in my word, then you're my disciples. See, to become a disciple, mean, of the word disciple in the Greek, mathetes, means a pupil, a student, a learner who sits at the feet of what? A teacher, a master. To become Jesus' disciple, you have to sit at the feet of a teacher. And you've got to do it regularly and seriously and continuously with focus. You need to pass the teacher who knows what he's talking about. There's so many churches out there you could attend that you'd just be playing games, wasting time in your spiritual life. You need to be with a prepared pastor. If you're here, you found one. If I'm not your cup of tea, there's somebody out there. But make sure you find one before you, before you <laughs> jump ship. Okay? Now let me tell you this. Now if you continue in the Word, maybe you will, maybe you won't, look what happens. Verse 32. I've got a few minutes here. And, and see, right now what I'm doing is I'm helping you with one of your problems. One of your problems is concentration. I, why can't he just preach, you know, short messages and stop? No, I refuse to do that. My job is to train you to be better. You'll go watch a football game for three hours. Go to a movie for two and a half. Go to a class that you're taking for your education to better your life and make more money for two, three hours. You have no problem doing that. Don't give me no excuses. And don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I'm here to do a job. Believe it or not, I love you enough to tell you the truth and to challenge you to be better. And I put a lot of time into these studies. Many hours that I cannot even count. Hours of my life that I could be doing other things that I can never get back. But you know what? I rejoice at doing it. And I'm going to be faithful to do it God's way. To challenge you. Why? Because if you do it, look what happens. And you shall know the truth. Where do you know the truth? Here. And what happens? And the truth shall make you what? Free. The truth will make you free. It will make you free from whatever thing that is troubling you. In this case, not being able to handle being alone and being frustrated and discouraged and insecure and then wallowing in self-pity. You don't make progress in the Christian life by wallowing about your problems. You make, problem, you make progress by handling them God's way. And snapping what? Out of it. Like I said, God will give you your moment. But when your moment is done, 
God says, all right, get up now, and let's get down to business. Because God's not, you know, hit, you know what the world will do? They'll come over and they'll rub your back and say, oh, poor you, you're all alone, nobody's there. <laughs> let's weep together. And all you do is sink deeper into your what? Oh, you feel good because they, they give you a little attention for a few minutes, but when they're gone, guess what? You're alone again. When you leave the nightclub, guess what? You're alone again. What's the solution to being alone? Is occupation with Jesus Christ. You know the truth, the truth will set you free. Now, I'm going to give you the first principle, and then we're going to close. Point one, please. Principle number one. Loneliness. As if you don't already know by now. Just reiterating something. Loneliness, being alone, is a pathway to God. God uses it. He uses being alone to draw, uh, not a snare, I used voice recognition here, yeah. to draw us near to himself. Not a snare. That means near, not a snare, right? If you're taking notes. He uses loneliness to draw us near to himself. Loneliness is an opportunity to draw close to God. Do you understand this? Now, when you leave this morning, I want you to take this with you. And you may have heard some things that you didn't want to hear this morning. You may have heard some things that upset you. You may have heard some things that actually opened your eyes. And, and if that happened, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. You see, when I give out the word, I don't know how it's going to fall. I can't control the soil. The soil is your heart. Okay? I just sprinkle the seeds and... If the soil's good, it takes. If not, it doesn't take. So I'm hoping this morning that you will understand that God has a solution to your loneliness. And it's not just go down to the prayer line, let everybody pray over you, and get zapped. That's why these televangelists and fake healers make a lot of money. Because they promise people, all you need to do is give me some money, put it, put, send me the check, and we'll pray for you and send you the anointing oil and everything will be fixed. No, your mind, here's where the battle is of loneliness, in the mind. And the only thing that can fix your mind is it being what? Renewed and filled with God's word. And understanding who God is and building a deep, intimate relationship with him and being occupied with Jesus Christ satisfies, satisfies and solves the problem of being alone. And I'll share more about my personal testimony on that, and I'll share more from the Word of God about those people in the Word who did solve that problem by being occupied with Christ. But this morning, leave here with this. Being alone is a pathway to God. You cannot be alone. You may be in, there's various reasons why you're alone, but ultimately it's all God's plan. Whatever reason, whether you're a widower or you've just been single your whole life or you're divorced, or maybe you married and got people around you, but you still feel alone because of what you're facing, what you're facing. There's all kinds of reasons for being alone, but here's the thing. It could not happen in your life unless God allowed it. Now you've got to decide. Am I going to try to solve it the way the world does? Am I going to run off trying to find a man, a woman, people, friends, entertainment? Or am I going to use my time alone? to grow in my relationship with Jesus Christ, build a social life with God so that my soul is filled with his thoughts and his word satisfies my soul so that I can be alone and still be happy and still have purpose and still have meaning and more than anything else, still have hope because I know that God is preparing me for something what? Greater. When I believe he's preparing me for something greater in my loneliness, I can face it. If I don't understand that he's using my loneliness as part of his plan to prepare me for something greater, I will get frustrated, upset with God, bitter, and run off to some foolish, fleshly solution and miss out. May that not be May that never be said of anyone here this morning. Folks, heart to heart, I love you dearly. I love you dearly. 
I don't do this for my health. I don't put the time in to prepare these studies and to teach it and pour my heart and soul in it for my health. I do it because I care about you and I want to honor God by proclaiming his truth faithfully. And nothing would give me greater delight than to see you plug in to what this book tells us the solutions to life are, especially in this area of being alone. We have to learn how to handle it if we want God's highest and best. We got, there's a lot more to come, a lot more to come. I pray that you will return to hear God's word. And I'm going to tell you something else. People who are tottering like this this morning about this in their life, guaranteed this week God's going to try to, not God, God's going to try to get you here. The devil is going to, the kingdom of darkness is going to do everything it can to keep you from coming back and hearing what you need to hear and learn about this subject. Don't let it happen. Start right there. The, the next step for you to start overcoming being alone and doing it God's way is to put his word first, to daily get his word, and to be here next Sunday. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, this morning, we're so grateful and thankful that have had this time, Lord. Precious time, Lord. Time spent with you, fellowshipping in your word, worshiping you in song and praise and prayer and thanksgiving. And I ask now, Lord, that you challenge our hearts, Lord, for everyone here, that we'd all learn what is necessary to handle the test of being alone, that we may handle it according to your plan, that we might be occupied with Christ, building the soul structure, using the time alone to draw near to you so that we may be prepared for those great things that you have exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think for each one of us. If there be anyone today that is not saved, my prayer is that you would convict them of their sin, that they may believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. We'll take a moment of silent prayer for anyone who wishes to believe upon Christ. Know that I'm a sinner but I am believing in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Father, if your Holy Spirit has spoken to anyone's heart this morning, and they have believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you would give them the assurance that you have forgiven them and saved them. Father, today I pray that you'd reveal your love to them in a special way, and I ask that you lead them back to study your word, that they might grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask these things now in his precious name. Amen and amen. Folks, let's stand. Deacons will come forward to pray for the offering. Bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together once again to honor and worship you, Lord. Thank you for the church that you have provided for us and our pastor that you have provided for us, Father. I just pray for the offering, Lord. I pray for those who give, Father, so generously to further the preaching and teaching of your word, Lord. And ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing unto the Lord as the offerings pass.
with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust. think about something today, this week. I want you to stop and put some time and think about it. The God of the universe has given us a book so that we could know him. He sent his son on the cross to suffer that horrible agony to forgive us of all our sins and guarantee us a place in his kingdom forever. And he calls us to have a relationship and fellowship with himself. He is so gracious and he promises to provide everything we need to be able to fulfill his plan. And then he does something even more tender, which we may not recognize as tender. 
he puts us in a place alone because he says, I want you to myself for this time. I want you and me to walk this season together. And we, in our foolishness, in our carnality, so often say, I don't want that. We don't want what the God of the universe is providing and offering and promising if we walk through that season with him that he's got something so much greater for us. Don't miss this, folks. It breaks my heart to think of how many people. There were people right here who are going to miss it. Because, and I pray they won't, but it's just inevitable that human nature is it will happen. But hopefully some will realize that God has taken a special enough interest in me that he's put me in this place of being alone because he wants my attention. And he wants to give me his attention by teaching me his ways so that ultimately he can give me something greater. See why we should embrace it? We should embrace it so stop griping about it. Stop re resisting it. Stop sulking. Stop being frustrated. And start drawing near to your Father and our Lord and Savior, the G Jesus Christ. Do you hear me? Amen? Amen? Brother Tom Kennedy, would you come and close us in prayer? Father, um, you love us with a desperate love, and the cross is the proof of this. I ask for your grace so that each of us will really get that more deeply and be able to give of ourselves more freely to you so that we can walk and live in that relationship. I ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Folks, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget, coffee in, stay for some fellowship. God bless.